Welcome to Indivisible. I'm your host, John Stubbins. Thanks for joining us tonight, America. Coach Mike Godfried is a great American patriot. He's a man that knows how to pay it forward. Aside from doing things like leading great football teams, which Mike has done everywhere from Cincinnati to Kansas to Pitt, Mike is a leader, a leader of men. He's a Christian leading souls to Jesus Christ, and he does that in a variety of ways. Mike is also the author of the book, Coach's Challenge. And I highly recommend that you get that book and read it as soon as you can. Bill Walsh, the great San Francisco 49ers coach and Super Bowl winning coach, said that Mike gets to the heart of a life in football and relays life lessons as a coach. Mike is the CEO of Team Focus, an organization that does so much good in this country, touches so many lives. They do things like they have a banquet every year with Coach Nick Saban, and they, he deals with so many other coaches, coaches' lives that he's touched and affected all through America. And I want to welcome onto the show my friend, Coach Mike Godfrey to Indivisible. Welcome, Mike. Thanks, John. That's uh, not very nice. And I appreciate those words, but uh, I'm happy to be on with you. Well, we're, we're very happy that you're on, Mike. And, you know, I want to, again, uh, just tell everybody out there, Mike wrote this wonderful book, Coach's Challenge. And I highly recommend that you guys get that book, read it, pass it on to your young ones, and and let them read it as well. Mike, can you tell us a little bit about what Team Focus does and what they're up to right now? John, uh, Team Focus is a leadership program for boys, young men without a father from the ages of 10 to whatever. And then we still have, we're in our 20th year of mentoring young men without a father. And it all is trying to raise up leaders, John. And that's the book, Coaches Challenge. There's a lot about team focus in there, but a lot about growing up in a great country in a small town. And so uh, a lot of good things in the, in the book. What do you guys have up? I know the coronavirus right now has yeah. us all locked down temporarily. But once we get past this, what events do you guys have coming up for later this year? It's a year-round program, John, and there's no cost. I never wanted to have a program like this and see a young man say, I don't have enough money to attend or this mom to tell us that or the grandma. Uh, so we just, uh, there's no cost. And their cost is a buy-in to be a leader and find out what is especially notable about leadership and teamwork in the home. We talk about the mom and the young man are a team. Two or more make a team. And we want we we think teamwork is the best way. And, and I learned teamwork at, uh, in athletics when I was a kid, when the coach would say, here's the rules. And so I was all right because I wanted to play. And uh, so we give them the rules that we want them to uh, study. We want them to uh, take notes. We want them to sit up, say, yes, sir, no, ma'am. Uh, thank everybody for helping them, and uh, but just things that would make it better every day for their life. What ages of the young men are you dealing with? We started at 10 years old. Now, we started before with eight, eight-year-olds, and one of the best young men that ever came out of Team Focus was eight. And he was sitting around, and I would say, okay, we're going to go walk. 
to the cafeteria and he'd say, why, why do we have to do that? And I'd say, well, because it's not yours to ask why, just do or die. And so then we, then we would go study and, and take notes and I'd say, you take notes, he'd say, why? But he always would ask why. But he became, he's a pro basketball player in a, in a foreign country and he's teaching and he's doing different things. And so he's grown up for that eight year old to probably 25 right now. And he's doing great. Oh, that's, that's, that's wonderful. That, that's the kind of story that we want to hear. We're going to take a quick break, America. We'll be right back with Coach Mike Godfrey. We're back with Coach Mike Gottfried. Mike, I just I wanted to talk a little bit about other than what you're doing with Team Focus and obviously the way that you've paid it forward, as Coach Woody Hayes used to say, and uh, a, a principle that I live by, and I know you do. Tell our audience a little bit about some of the interactions. I know you were you were telling me the other day, I think it was last week when we were on the phone, and you were telling me the really cool story about how the USC athletic director, through your intervention, you got the, that phone call came in at like 3 a.m. in the morning uh, to, to hire him. Tell our audience about that. John, it, it's about an appointed time. I believe we're called on in certain times of our life to do something and uh, we can choose to do it or we can pass and miss it. But then the Lord's going to go to somebody else. And uh, Mike McGee was my athletic director at Cincinnati, a great guy. And I loved him. And we were there for two years and I took the Kansas job. I originally turned it down, but then decided to take it. And I left Mike and our team and uh, I never felt good about that and then I was coming back after spring practice in the summertime so we stopped by Mike McGee's house and Mike was a great football player at Duke, Duke he played professional football and um, so we sat around and he said we're going out to Kings Island which is an amusement park you're well aware of, and in uh, Cincinnati. And he said, do you want to join us? I said, sure, we'll go with you. So I took my two girls. He had uh, five kids and his wife and Mickey, my wife, was with us. We drove out to Kings Island. We're talking. We're in the line for the roller coaster. So when you get this timeline, you could see any second this thing could bust down. But Mike's standing in the uh, line of the ride in the roller coaster, and he said, do you know anybody in USC? And I said, yeah, I know the football coach and his wife real well. And uh, he said, would you happen to have their number, their jobs open, the athletic director's jobs open? I said, I don't know, but I said, I don't have the phone number, but my wife, who is very well organized, will have that number. So we go through the ride, 40 seconds on the ride, we get off, we walk slowly, and I asked Mickey, does she have the number? She said, I think I do. So she pulled out this little book, and you could hardly read it, and she gave me the number. So I wrote it down. Now. I walked to the payphone, hit the number, get the wife on the phone. I said, hello, Susie, Susie is uh, tender. And she, she said, he just left. He's driving out. I said, can you catch him? So she put down the phone, ran to get him, and uh, she caught him. 
And uh, so he came back in. He said, Mike, I don't have much time. We're going to hire an athletic director tonight. I said, he said, what do you need? I said, I have a right guy for you. Mike McGee at Cincinnati, great football guy. And I said, he would do a great job. So he took the message. He said, I got to go. He said, where are you going to be about three your time in the morning? I said, here's the number. I'll be in Mike McGee's house. And so at three o'clock in the morning, the call came. And he said, tell Mike McGee he's going to be, we're going to notify him to meet us in Chicago. We're going to interview him in about a month. So that was June. So in August, I'm sitting with Tex, Shram, Tom Landry, and Gil Brandt, the three guys that really did great with Dallas Cowboy football. Yes, sir. We're sitting there, and I'm watching the TV in California, Thousand Oaks, where they where they practice. All of a sudden, Mike McGee came on. I'd forgotten about the call. I forgot about about all that. I said, what's Mike McGee doing out in Southern California? And Tex Ram and everybody came over and they were announcing him as a new athletic director at Southern Cal. So he got the job. And I just think back to that moment of five more seconds or 10 seconds, I may have missed it. That's right. And we've got to give Mickey the credit to have that little book in her purse like she did at King's Island. <laughs> she did. She's totally organized. God bless you, Mickey. Uh, we're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back, America. We're back with Coach Mike Godfrey. Before we go, Coach, I want to flash the photo of that book, Coach's Challenge, one more time. Everybody, if you can, get a copy of this book. It's a wonderful book, wonderful read. I recommend that you pass it on to your, your, your sons and your daughters and let them read it, number one. And then also go to teamfocususa.org which is Mike's site for Team Focus and get involved so that you can help young men out there. As you know, it's one of my love affairs is to help fatherless men, young men that have problems that are, are, can't see their fathers, can't see their mothers, vice versa. So we applaud you, Mike, for all that you do and thank you for joining us tonight, my friend. Uh, we can't wait for this coronavirus to pass so that we can start planning upcoming events with you. Uh, I know we want to come down and join you for the banquet with Coach Saban this year. God bless you, Mike. Thanks, John, and especially for everything you're doing. We really appreciate it, and we will continue to work hard paying it forward. We're going to take a quick break, America. We'll be right back. Well, we're out of time again, America. Thanks for tuning in tonight. We had a great guest, Coach Mike Godfrey, really good friend and, and someone that we look up to, a man that pays it forward. Remember that as you're out there talking to your son, your daughter, your friend's children, make sure that you're paying it forward. We'll see you tomorrow night, America. <laughs>